Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning everybody. We were looking at the uh, uh, solving the partial differential equation for the acoustic field and now uh, as opposed to a classical wave equation we have a source term which is a heat release rate <coughs> which is really driven by uh, some kind of uh, fluctuating heat source and we actually um, uh, took the partial differential equation and did a model expansion on it or the so called Galerkin technique and then we derived the uh, ordinary differential equations for this. So uh, what we have are these two equations d eta j over dt equal to eta j dot and the second equation which is coming from the energy equation is for is written for d eta j dot and uh, one second. just a moment. So this is fine. So uh, there is a question as to what is the damping term uh, that is this term that I used so uh, which represents acoustic damping. Now uh, in uh, I will speak a little bit about acoustic damping but modeling damping is a very complicated thing and uh, but I just want to uh, raise the issues which some of you may uh, at least from the industry may appreciate. Uh, so in reality damping is a very complicated thing see acoustic waves actually um, have to get converted to vorticity waves and they are the ones which get dissipated it is in the boundary layer. So uh, it is just like uh, acoustic by itself does not have dissipation but it is the vorticity waves that can dissipate so it sets up a boundary layer and uh, in the boundary layer these things dissipate and it is uh, somewhat involved to calculate this and also uh, we have losses. So we have a radiation losses from the end if, if you have open pipe you, ca you can have a radiation losses sound is going out otherwise you would not hear any sound and uh, if you have uh, I mean in reality no matter how thick walls you get some amount of sound will get into the walls the walls will vibrate and take away some energy. So, uh, so there is volume losses and depending on what gas is there whether if it is if it is lot of water vapor you will have a lot of damping because water vapor damps much more than uh, dry air or if you have humid air it damps much more and, and so on. Now there is also one more complication if you are having a combustion experiment so you have a uh, steady flame in with certain shape and all that and you have you measured the damping but the flame shape the temperature profile everything would be uh, concentration profiles everything will be different when the instability happens because flame shape itself would have changed temperature profiles would have changed uh, and, and so on. So the acoustic damping value itself changes during the uh, during the combustion instability and it is hard to I mean there is no easy way to how to find it there is probably no way at the moment. Uh, radiation losses are modeled fairly reasonably well. Uh, so at the moment I am not going to get into this although in reality it is a very important problem because whether the instability comes or not depends on how much you drive versus how much you damp it is like uh, whether you have enough money to spend and whether you feel rich depends on not just on how much money you get but how much money you spend. I was uh, I, like I said I read that when Amitabh Bachchan declared bankruptcy he had only 93 crores with him so uh, I mean. I am having uh, not even one lakh with me and I think I am very rich. So it, it depends on what is coming in versus what is uh, going out. So so, uh, so the amount of damping in the system is very critical because you may have instability even with the small driving if the damping is very small. But you may have same amount of driving if the damping is very huge you just would not have instability. <coughs> so we are uh, it, this is a big topic and I, I guess a lot of research need to be done on this but I am not going to get into this but I have made a simple model this model comes from Kulik and Matweave I will write the reference also and uh, so what the model is so 
So, omega j is the wave number of the uh, or the frequency of the jth mode. Now, we, in non-dimensional sense, it's all the same, and uh, so j corresponds to the same jth mode. Oh, yesterday we had written n, but okay, we repl we can replace n with j. So I think we'll just stick with that. That's the notation which I have here, and uh, c1 and c2 are just constants which you get from experiments. You perform experiments and estimate c1 and c2 based on a uh, lot of people have done experiments and uh, and then we put this value in here. So this is kind of a ad hoc way of treating damping, but uh, rest of the derivation is fairly tight. But this term we are to some extent we are putting in by hand although there is some basis for it. Uh, I hope Rajesh you are okay with this. Uh, the first uh, uh, first mode yeah fundamental the, the, the n eigen values right uh, for the natural mode so we just take the first one. Again there is this question as to act, actual eigen value may be very different from the natural mode and so on but this is like a model damping so we know the modes and based on that we put in a damping. So damping depends critically on the uh, boundary layer damping depends on viscosity and heat conduction and, and so on. Uh, but here everything is empirically obtained and put into the C1 and C2 and uh, this uh, you can see that uh, this this term is such that if you have um, high frequencies this term uh, its contribution will be high. So which is uh, that is the way they have modeled it uh, which is uh, uh, correct because uh, higher modes are damped, uh, damped easily because higher modes are higher gradients in terms of heat conduction and viscosity because the uh, uh, omega is high so the wave number is also high. So I will just leave it there I do not want to go into uh, greater detail but I mean this is a topic where you can do PhD thesis on okay. So, but so within this level only I want to speak about not a uh, lot of uh, there are um, people have measured the damping for different kinds of pipes and so on and um, again the losses can be non-linear for example uh, if you have uh, uh, radiation from the uh, duct end. So uh, when you look at a pipe and when the flow is coming this way what will happen? How will be the flow outside? It will it will be like a jet which sheds vortices and uh, when you go in. we are sucking this way. So there is an inherent unsymmetry so this will um, introduce some non-linearity in the boundary boundary condition and, uh, and, and, and so on. So uh, you can have losses can have non-linearity and people have, who have studied musical instruments have modeled the um, uh, losses due to this kind of vortex shedding and, and, and so on and so forth. So, uh, so there are, uh, I mean lot of complications associated with this term and it need not be linear also but uh, we will just leave it here okay. Any other question? So this is like our <coughs> breathing we are alive because of this unsymmetry if God stopped flow separation we would all die within 3-4 minutes because we will be if, if this was symmetric you will breathe out what you breathe in and we will breathe in what you breathe out so which is then eventually the CO2 levels in our blood will rise. So thankfully we have this unsymmetry and we are alive. Uh, but when you it is good for us but maybe um, flow separation but makes dealing with the equations difficult but that is okay I would rather be alive and deal with a complex equation than have a simple equation and be dead okay. okay about hydrodynamic instability is It depends what solver you are talking about. So if you are having a DNS solver which can deal with compressible DNS which deals with everything then your P prime will include everything acoustics, hydrodynamics, I mean vorticity, uh, I mean acoustics and hydrodynamics. Now even if you are having a LES source you will have a compressible LES or compressible urans. So the moment you say compressible you, uh, you have acoustics and you have uh, if you have, it's a, if you have, if it's a Navier-Stokes equation, you have hydrodynamics as well inbuilt into it. But then, 
what is acoustic, what is hydrodynamics that is the issue and so it is hard to separate them out unless you do some kind of analysis and uh, also uh, I mean there are ways to separate out I will not go into that, uh, but the other thing is to do a full compressible analysis of a real combustor, turbulent combustor is not so easy. So, people do not do that they actually um, split it into a hydrodynamic zone and a combustion zone and try to couple them in some way or the other and there are a lot of issues associated with this because what are the right equations to use and so on. So, it is an open problem. So, it is uh, yes it is included so that makes things even more difficult because you have to be careful. If you can solve everything not numerically, it will have everything. But if you have, you may, I think perhaps 50 years later or 20 years later, that may be the way things will be dealt with. At the moment, you can do that for hydrodynamics or even combusting flows, but thermoacoustic instability <coughs> because the acoustic length scales are of the order of uh, meter and the hydrodynamics length scale where the flame is and so on is of the order of centimeters and the reaction zone may happen over millimeter. So, there are several length scales and uh, therefore, it makes calculation very difficult uh, and disparity of length scale disparity of time scale. So, it is not so trivial to just uh, take a solver and run it and do get the answer. So, in principle if you can do it yes everything is there you do not have to see why are we having a wave equation because we want do not want to deal with anything else and we want to have a simple way to deal with wave. So, that is all. So, we are trying to make things simple. So, we throw away everything else. So, essentially we are kind of superimposing hydrodynamic thing and then a acoustic situation. Where? So, we say we have these both. Exactly, yeah. So, we are uh, saying that there is a there is a um, um, we, we are saying that hydrodynamic in this particular example at least we are saying that the hydrodynamic zone is very thin and its effect can be distilled into a heat release rate. Uh, and then you go into acoustics, but I am not even solving for hydrodynamics here, but it is in strictly you have to solve for the hydrodynamics and obtain the equation for heat release rate and then uh, you have to uh, do take these two solvers and march in a coupled manner. Hope it is somewhat clear, but you are asking a very difficult a very deep question actually. So, but uh, and even if you can agree in principle as to what to do to do it in practice is at the moment still very difficult. I do not know how, how many years more it will take, but that is where it is. Any other questions? Very nice question. Thank you. Unsteady So, you can use unsteady rants. We have to have an unsteady base flow which will give the unsteady Q prime. So, without that I think it would be uh, it would be difficult. Yeah, people are using for solving hydrodynamics okay. and I think eventually industry would move in that direction. I think LES would be still for the academics or maybe a linearized LES solver or linear or something maybe still feasible, but uh, the full nonlinear solution I think my feeling I mean I, I, these things can all go wrong predictions. Yeah, very good point. Anything else? Because you're talking about uh, 10 million grid points and 20 million grid points and so on, so it's uh, and and it's not just getting one solution. You have to get uh, it's a time evolving solution. That is our first difficulty, and you have to do this for a wide range of parameters because somewhere you may have instability, somewhere you don't have instability. So you have to check everything, and so it's very expensive calculations. Yeah, Vishnu, you have. So, I will proceed. So, uh, uh, I will mail you these references uh, which give all these things and uh, so next thing is to linearize the time delay. So, what you do is u f of t minus 2 is u of prime t minus t. 
So, uh, u is of course based on our Gilerkin modes and so on. So, we have to write the expression for this. Okay. So, it's a little tricky, but uh, not that tricky. I mean, it's just straightforward once you figure out to do this kind of algebra. Now, you do not need to do this, you can actually solve it as a delay differential equations and software packages are available to solve delay differential equations, but I will not deal with that in this class. So, just go back u f prime equal to sigma j equal to 1 to n eta j cos j x. So, we can use any variable j or n or k, I mean as long as you stick with one thing. So, I will write in a, a little bit roundabout way and you may wonder why I am a, why I am doing this roundabout thing, but in the end you will get a, a sleek looking thing. So, just be patient and uh, just follow this. So, I will write this in an expanded way. So, cos by x f times eta 1 plus there is no eta dot term. So, I will put 0 times 2 pi x f times eta 2 plus 0 times eta 2 dot plus ta 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 plus cos n pi x f times eta n plus 0 times eta n dot. Okay. So, I have written it out in long hand. So, this I can write in a matrix form as cos by x f. So, although it is quite involved to write these things on the board, when you do a MATLAB programming or, or Fortran programming, it is quite simple because all this can be done with matrix multiplication and simple do loops and, and so on. And MATLAB is very suited for multiplying vectors and matrices, it is optimized for that. So, you do not even have to write these loops. You just define the matrices and vectors and tell it to multiply and it will multiply very fast. They are optimized for that. I will write everything in the long hand so that things are clear. I hope this is clear. I will pause for a minute. So, this could be written as u transpose sky, where u transpose equal to cos by x f 0 cos 2 by x f 0 cos n by x f 0 and Chi transpose is this eta eta 1 eta 1 dot eta 2 eta 2 2 dot and chi would be this column uh, column vector and u transpose is this u would be column vector. But if you have transpose then you can write everything in a same row I think that is the reason why they invented this notation. So, if you multiply uh, uh, u transpose chi and call this as u and call this as chi you can see this will give this. And so, this is a uh, just a sleek notation that is all. Okay. And so, we need one more thing for the second term, we have to expand this. So, uh, what I will do is to follow the same, same step. See this big term now became just a small symbol. Okay. So, we can write big matrices, but they will be symbolically very small and even constructing the big matrices is involved in writing a, in a paper, but on computer it is very peaceful. <coughs> C 
see when I uh, differentiate this u, if I differentiate this, the first term will differentiate this with respect to time, the first term will be eta 1 dot times cos pi x f, the next term will be eta 2 dot times cos 2 pi x f. So, there is no eta 1 term, there is no eta 2 term, because when you differentiate this, this term will stay, but there is a dot coming here and this term will go away. So, there is no eta 1, eta 2 terms, there is only dot terms. Okay. So, if you say that uh, we can call this in the same manner where p would be equal to 0 cos pi x f 0 cos 2 pi x f 0 cos n pi x f. any dynamical system you do in time domain I mean you will take this approach. So, it does not have to be in thermoacoustics even if you study some complicated vibration problems or st structural problems or uh, some problem in magneto hydrodynamic instabilities or astrophysics I think you will follow the same approach. If you want to convert it into uh, the final uh, solution of the form d k by d t equal to f of chi and uh, so it just looks like several pages and but in the end it will, when the dust settles down you have something really neat and trim that you ever wonder whether you have to write so many pages okay and that is the good thing okay thank you. So, now our next step is to deal with this big thing we have dealt with this u f transpose. So, now we have to assemble this thing as a matrix. Again, I, I must keep on emphasizing n number of times that it is just the assembling procedure which looks difficult, but actual assembling in the computer is trivial. So, let me write that. Because you do not have to write long hand in the computer. you can assemble them in this way or you can put all the eta's first and all the eta dots next that is all up to you okay some way you assemble so if you go back and look at this equation d eta dot by dt equal to eta j dot or d eta dot minus eta j dot equal to 0 so that equation will assemble so what we need is some kind of matrix here times eta 1, eta 1 dot, eta 2, eta 2 dot, ta 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 ta, eta n, eta n dot. Okay. So now it is clear. What is the if that is the equation we are going to do first? Eta 1 dot equal to d eta d eta 1 over dt equal to eta 1 dot. So what happens to the equation? What will be the first one? Let me write that equation here we write d, t, d eta 1 over d t minus eta 1 uh, 1 dot equal to 0. So, what are the coefficients? So, this is the first equation yeah yeah it will be 0 minus 1 and everything else will be 0 okay excellent. Can you look at the next equation and say what would be the coefficients? So, you will have this j pi, which I will call omega j. So, that will be multiplying eta 1, and this term will be multiplying eta 1 dot, right. So, you will have omega 1 squared 
2 eta 1 omega 1 0 0 and then comes 0 0 0 what minus 1 0 and here would be 0 0 omega 2 square 2 zeta 2 omega 2 0 and here last one you will have lot of zeros 0 minus 1 And this one would have again all the zeros and omega n squared and two psi n omega n. Okay. Yeah. This is okay. So it was peaceful to assemble the left hand side. So, if you look at the right hand side, first term, first equation will have 0 on the right hand side, right? Uh, d eta j by d t minus eta 1 dot equal to 0. So, we can put 0. The second one will have this 2 k j pi over gamma m times this blah 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 times sin uh, pi x f. The third equation will have again 0. The fourth equation will have all this blah blah <coughs> times sin 2 pi x f. So it's clear, right? So, so I will call this. Uh, uh, I will call this whole thing as some kind of uh, alpha or something. So this would be like, or let me write it out. There's, there's no space, so that's the problem. Alpha times no alpha is reduced. Yeah. No delta or oh, some symbol? Can you tell me which we have not used? I want to use alpha later. So, again, so. some symbol you can say. I will say g. I don't think we have used this. Yeah, times zero pi sine pi x f zero two pi sine by x f 0 n pi sin n pi x f okay so this g would be what would it be 2 k over gamma m and times this square root of 1 by 3 plus the prime of t minus tau minus so we have put it in some matrix form Last semester I taught this whole thing in one day, so I guess nobody understood anything because they were not asking anything also. So we uh, said that we want to do a linearized analysis, uh, uh, so we want to do linearization and how would you, I mean we have a non-linear term here square root, so what would you do? Binomial expansion, we will do a binomial expansion. But you have to make sure that u f prime is small, so that uh, we don't run into any problems. Is that clear? Binomial expansion for right hand side. So this is valid for.
Ja, Freie Mittler sind unter. So we expand this term, so we will get 1 plus 3 uf prime times t minus tau divided by 2 and the next term would be what is the expansion of 1 plus x power half? So, it will be so next term will be minus half minus 1 will give minus. So, 9 over 8. So, you can cancel this one and this one and now you can simplify it by taking it out. So, for the nonlinear analysis, you do not have to do this, but I will do the nonlinear also with this, then you can see some nice form, okay, just for that. Is this okay so far? I will pause for a minute. We know how to expand this, right? We did that just now. So, we will use that, we will say equal to root 3 over 2. This is okay. And the reason for uh, this square term, I am writing u f prime times u f prime, and one of them I replace by this expansion, the other one I am keeping it that way. And uh, I have worked out the whole thing and I see which way it comes nicely, so that is the reason for this. I have first tried the other one and became a big mess, okay. Yeah, Shabrish, you had something to say. So, just look at this if this is okay. So, now we can assemble. So, let me call this uh, matrix as A1, okay. So, I will call this matrix as I'll call this matrix as A1, A subscript term. So, I wanted to come to this form, this is my hidden agenda or, or whatever. So, that is the reason I am doing all this equal to just a moment, let me just check the signs. Yeah, there was a minus here. Yeah, G is as a minus. That is what I was. Searching for. Yeah. 
write more compact so that there is space. times this thing. So, u transpose chi minus tau times p transpose chi minus halfway there, but we want to make the whole thing compact and in this form because okay. then you have we can use the machinery to so that is the thing in maths you get it to some problem that is solved and then you use that machinery to solve your problem. So, we always reduce to some standard thing and the mathematicians worked at they have been working for hundreds of years at getting the standard thing so that we can use it. Uh, I must uh, take a uh, little time out and explain how we did things. So, uh, I did not know anything about dynamical system theory, I will have to edit this out of the camera. Neither did I know anything about uh, matrices and I did linear algebra in BTEC, but it okay, I did could two problems, but I did not know why we are doing all these things. So, when we did this, we did first in the standard uh, the way they use the second order different equation and, and, and solve it and so on. And, uh, and we were seeing all these interesting things like transient growth and, and subcritical bifurcation and so on. So, of course, we could have continued that way bulldozing our way, but then it real, I, suddenly it occurred to me that all of these things have been done. So, then we took a time out, put everything into the framework of things that have already been done and then we proceeded and that really helped. Otherwise, we, we are reinventing the wheel, there is a wheel take it, put it in your vehicle and go that is the idea. So, should I write out what is A1? I will do that anyway, just to be sure. So, A1 equal to 0, <coughs> minus 1, 0, 0, ta 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 ta. Omega 1 square to eta 1, omega 1, 0, 0. Then next one will be 0, 0, 0, minus 1, 0. Then you have 0, 0, 0 omega 2 square minus 2 psi 2 omega 2 0 0 0 and you come back to 0 and minus 1 and omega n square 2 psi n omega n. Sorry? Oh, well this should be here. Yeah, thank you. Get overconfident and you make a mess. Yeah. So, this dots mean zeros. So, given that this is A1, my objective here is to M. Um, doing it step by step because I could do the whole thing in one step, but then it may be very confusing. So, once you do this, the next time onwards you can do it much faster. Okay. So, I am purposely going slow. So, 
this is the plan. So uh, to get this, so what we do is we, we need something to call these terms. Uh, so we will define a new constant, not constant, a variable beta j or parameter is root 3 over gamma m k j pi times sin j pi xf. So you see this has a subscript beta j, so that is not a constant, but when you have beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 like that. So we will look at this term, we know that this has to, we have to take this and multiply the first term, okay. So A2 can be constructed as follows, equal to 0, beta 1, 0, well we have a minus sign, so we will put the minus sign also here, 0, beta n times u transpose, right. This should be 0, minus beta 1, 0, minus beta 2, 0, minus beta n times cos by xf, I am just trying to expand this is the definition of u transpose times cos n by xf 0. So we just have to multiply what kind of dimension will this matrix have? Hmm? Yeah. So this would be zero 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 and what would be the next term? Minus B you multiply this by this, right? minus beta 1 cos by xf, the next term will be 0, what will be the next term? Right? 0 minus beta 1 cos n by xf 0, yeah, next term would be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, next term would be minus beta 2 cos by xf 0, minus beta 2 cos by xf 0, minus beta n, sorry, beta 2 cos n pi xf 0 and then you come down you have on rows of 0 then you have minus beta n this multiplies this this multiplies this this multiplies that by xf 0 minus beta n cos 2 by xf 0 so this is our a2 Any problem with this? We will try to do A3 also. We are looking at this term here, which comes from here. So we have to write A3 equal to this is same for all terms. Mm. 
this is nothing but this column written with those constant added times p transpose which was 0 cos pi xf 0 cos 2 pi xf 0 cos n pi xf okay is this clear so we will assemble this where shall I do it I will try to do here itself with another color so this equal to so first term will be 0 0 right next one would be first term will be 0 the next term will have term so that is different from here where the first term has stuff next term is 0 that is because you transpose and p transpose have alternate set of terms. So you will the next term rows will be all zeros and then after that comes 0 minus beta 2 cos by xf of 0 minus beta 2 cos 2 pi xf <coughs> minus beta 2 cos uh, n pi xf and then you can write this the last column row will be minus 0 beta n cos by xf 0 minus beta n cos 2 by xf 0 minus beta n cos n by xf. So, we have it here now we can redo this into the following form we are all set to assemble it as d k over d t plus so this is a linear matrix and you have a nonlinear function here so this term is linear and this will be non-linear and we can check this at home so you have this a1 chi minus a2 chi and then this term okay and the rest will go into b um, sorry B L and B N L N L is non linear okay. So although these terms are kind of messy I have to admit this is as pretty an equation I can get out of this I think it is really beautiful you do not agree I am so thrilled by seeing this I was after seeing so several pages of algebra you could write something so neat and these terms are appearing so neat. So if you linearize this term will drop out and we will have dk dt plus some linear operator times chi 0 if you for the full thing you have some linear part plus a non-linear part so I will stop here.